In this video, I'll show you how I made this mini disc sander using items that I had laying around the workshop. Let's get started. In my search to find a mini disc sander for my shop, most were either way too big or way too expensive. And so I came up with a plan to build my own. All I needed was a few building materials and most importantly, a motor to drive the sanding wheel. Instead of buying a new motor, I decided to repurpose one from an old hand polisher I had laying around the workshop. Disassembly was pretty straightforward. I removed the motor from the shell and then disconnected the polishing wheel and the assembly that held it to the motor shaft. With the polisher now disassembled, it's time to create the base and enclosure for the new disc sander. For this, I cut some pieces out of scrap MDF using my table saw and miter saw. I used this piece of 2x6 lumber for the lower motor mount. With all the pieces now cut out, I turned my attention to the sanding wheel. For this, I used a 4 inch disc holder that I picked up from the hardware store. The opening on the disc holder was just a little too small, so I used a drill bit and a tap to open that up to the right size. I'll come back to the sanding wheel in a moment, but first, it's time to put that enclosure together. To attach the motor to the base, I use these conduit clamps. I wanted the front and back pieces as well as the top to be removable in case I need to do some maintenance in the future. For these pieces, I pre-drilled the holes, used a chamfering bit, and then installed them with screws. After a quick test fit, now it's time to attach the motor mount base to the bottom of the disc sander itself. To do that, I used more pre-drilled holes, the chamfering bit, and more screws. Without a way to mount the power switch from the polisher, I needed to find a different solution. And for that, I decided to use this project box. These are great because you can install all kinds of electrical components and keep them nice and secure. I drilled a hole for the power cord and then threaded it through the back of the enclosure. Next, I glued sandpaper to the wheel using contact cement. The first step is to apply a thin layer of the contact cement to each piece and then set them aside until the surface becomes tacky. Once these pieces are put together, it'll be very difficult to get them apart. Now it's time to turn my attention back to the project box. I figured out exactly where I wanted it, pre-drilled some holes, and then mounted it to the enclosure using screws. Next, I drilled a hole through the back of the box into the enclosure for wiring.
and then I drilled a hole in the face of the project box and this is to mount the switch. I used a vintage style toggle switch, mounted it to the box, and then wired the terminals and fed the wires through the enclosure. With the switch and front cover now firmly in place, I can go ahead and begin wiring the motor and connecting power. I use standard crimp type terminals to make all the electrical connections. With the wiring now complete, we're almost ready for a test run. Once the contact cement was tacky on both the sandpaper and the wheel, I put both pieces together and then it was time to do a quick test fit before moving on to putting the rest of the enclosure together. Next, I installed a work wrist, and this was made out of some more of that scrap MDF that I happen to have laying around. I decided to add a vent to the top of the enclosure just to keep the motor from overheating. To do that, I used my trusty jigsaw. I used a spare clamp to figure out the opening size for the front piece, and then I cut it out also using the jigsaw. Next, I used my router to clean up the edges around the vent opening and some other areas around the top and the sides and edges of the enclosure. I thought this made it look much, much better. Next, I filled some of the cracks with filler, sanded it smooth, and then applied a couple of coats of gray primer. And now it's time for some reassembly and last minute details. I covered the vent opening using a piece of screen that I had left over from a prior project. I thought this made a very nice finishing touch. This was a very exciting project and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. And most of all, I look forward to using it to make more projects for you to enjoy. Stick around another moment for the reveal and be sure and tune in next time. Thanks for watching.